Hey everybody, Funky McClunky here. Welcome back to my workshop. This time we're going to be talking about painting. And I get questions all the time about how I paint my figures. And the fact is, I don't paint my figures nearly as much as I should. I look online on Instagram and on Etsy and wherever else, and I see so many examples of other people who have done fantastic paint jobs on my figures than I've actually done myself. I'm serious. I have painted so few of my own figures, uh, it's a little ridiculous. But people still ask me what types of paints to use on my figures, if you need to prime, all of that stuff. So I want to answer uh, a few of those right here, just in terms of how I do it. Uh, first of all, sorry for the bad lighting, and please don't criticize my, uh, actually, do criticize, I don't care. My workshop is a mess. Here, here, these benches are crazy, it, it's, it's awful. But anyway, the paints that I use are acrylic model paints, usually made by v Vallejo, Vallejo, or Tamiya. And they look like this, or they look like this. These are acrylic paints, super easy to use, pretty thin compared to your craft store paints, but they're meant for models. The quality is so much better. You're gonna get these from hobby shops or you can order them online. They're, they don't usually have these at uh, Hobby Lobby or Michael's, places like that. You gotta go to like a hobby town, something like that, where they sell models and RC planes and miniatures and things like that. That's where you wanna go for this stuff. You can, however, use craft store paint. Some of my fellow creators swear that you can just totally use this. You can, you absolutely can, but you're gonna have to do more coats. You're gonna have to be thin with it because this stuff is a little thicker and gloppier and it's really meant more for crafts. So you just have to have a little bit more patience with it. It definitely is cheaper than the fancy model paints. And I do have a lot of this on hand because I use it when I need a specific color or I'm on a, using a specific material that I just can't, I can't check that box with the fancy stuff. I have to use this. This in particular actually was being used to paint some 3D printed mermaids for my daughter. So when using those paints, you, you sometimes would, would need to use a primer and sometimes not. Uh, I know some fellow designers and painters and customizers always use primer and some never do. For me, it's a matter of what color I'm starting with and what color I want to end up with. For example, this is my Dedra Miro figure that I designed, and I'm actually almost done uh, painting her. Not super keen on the eyes that I did, but I might redo those. But anyway, need to paint her badge too. But this one, because it's white and it's black, I actually printed the legs in black resin so it'd make it easier to paint those black, and then I painted and then I uh, printed the rest in white resin, and then just you know painted the other colors on top of that. If, if I was starting with gray, if this was a gray print, which I sell through my Etsy store, I sell solid just gray basic prints of her, then I may put a primer on there because it'll make it easier for me to get from that gray to the white with fewer coats. Because like I said, this white model paint, or this model paint is a little thinner and especially a color like white, it's gonna take multiple coats. So in terms of primer, when you do wanna use a primer, I recommend, something that I have up here, but I can't seem to find it because what is happening here? Somebody, did I do something with it? Good grief. Anyway, Tamiya, the same company that makes this paint, they also make a spray primer, a gray spray primer. Oh God, it's over here. Good Lord. Losing my mind, folks. It's this stuff. Uh, not super cheap, but it goes a long way, especially when you're doing small things like figures. So it really is as simple as, let's see, let's take this guy. This is a prisoner and or figure that I need to finally paint. And he's going to have a white outfit. So this is a great example because if I paint this white, I'm going to want to hit it with the primer first. It'll just make my life a lot easier when it comes to painting it white. Okay, let's talk about clear figures for a second. So sometimes you want to make force ghost figures. Sometimes you want to print my uh, Obi-Wan or my Anakin scans or whatever uh, and make a force ghost figure. So you buy translucent resin, maybe. 
and you're trying to print that on your printer and it comes out and it, uh, and it looks kind of uh, frosty. It doesn't, look it doesn't look super clear, super translucent like you'd expect. Well, the way to get there is by using a high gloss spray. Some people swear by uh, Mod Podge, or uh, I think there's a, a tester's uh, gloss coat that you can use. I actually prefer something much cheaper and much more accessible, which is this stuff, Rust-Oleum High Gloss Clear Lacquer. Now that's what I've used. Actually, I have, a, I have an Obi-Wan here ready to go out to a customer soon, but this is a ghost Obi-Wan that I did with translucent blue resin, and then I sprayed it with the high gloss stuff and it looks like factory made translucent, like, like you want a force ghost to look. So that's the stuff to use there. And again, I'm gonna put links to some of this stuff uh, down in the comments or in the description. Another question I get asked is about, uh, after you paint a figure, you want it to have that vintage Kenner look. You want it to be shiny, but not too shiny. You don't want high gloss and you want it to be matte, but not too matte. Some people use testers dull coat which I have some of that around here. I'm not even gonna try to look for that. I don't really care for it. It's expensive, comes in a small container, and I don't think it's quite shiny enough for the vintage Kenner look. I want it to be just a little shinier. So what I end up using, and it's what I've used on these guys right here. I haven't finished putting their decals on, but these are like uh, Imperial Technicians that I made. The shininess, the sheen that I have on there is the result of I should have prepared a little bit better for this. Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. It says matte, but it's actually more of a satin finish. It actually has some sheen to it. So when you spray this on a painted figure, it's actually going to look shinier than you think it would. And again, this is from your local hardware store. It's not super expensive. It's like 5 or $6 for, for one of these, and it goes a long way. I highly recommend that you give that a shot. I also have, oh, look at that. What do you know? There's my tester's dull coat right there. This is, the, this is good, but it's uh, this little container at Hobby Lobby was $5.79, which is actually a pretty good price for it. It's usually more. And it's just not as shiny as I want it to be. This uh, Mod Podge matte is another one that is supposedly just like this, only less expensive and in a bigger container. Again, same deal, not shiny enough for me. So I didn't particularly care for it. Anyway. I'm trying to think what else to show you other than the fact that I have way too many things that I need to paint. Let's talk paintbrushes for a second. I get that question too. I actually have a couple of different containers of paintbrushes here. Uh, one is dirt cheap paintbrushes that I get from Michaels that I use for large areas, large paint apps. I'll paint a figure's body with this. And then I have these that I ordered off of Amazon that are much smaller. And you can just see that they're you know more fine point brushes uh, yeah, I can't even read that label. My eyes are getting bad, you guys. But these are not super expensive. You get like a half dozen of them for probably 10 or $12, something like that. And that's what I use for all of the, the finer details when I'm painting something. Again, you don't have to break the bank. Some people buy really expensive brushes. Some people buy the cheapest to the cheap. I like to go kind of somewhere in between. Uh, let's talk about eyes and uh, decals. So there are a lot of different ways for people you know, to approach painting vintage style Kenner eyes. Some people just use a really fine brush and they've got an amazing, you know, fine touch and not shaky hands and they can do those, those eyes really well. I'm not one of those people. I butchered many figures uh, in my early customizing days by putting basically googly eyes on them because I couldn't keep my hands steady and get a good Kenner look. Then somebody recommended water slide decals, which if you're not familiar, water slide decals are basically, uh, pa it's paper that you print on your computer and it acts kind of as a water activated sticker. You can cut out something of, uh, model model builders use it all the time to put like, you know, decals on the side of, a, of a, an airplane or a, a fighter jet, that kind of thing. You can use it here too. You print it on your computer, size it however you like, print it with your laser printer color or black and white on this special paper, and then you cut it out, you lay it on the area that you want it to be, put on, and then you use this stuff, micro set, to just dab it on, dab a little of this on there, and it like adheres this clear sticker-like thing to your figure. And what you end up with, I used it for these, check out these Imperial, gosh, I hope you can see, these Imperial de uh, uh, insignia on the shoulders here. I, I 
shrunk these down on my computer, printed them out really tiny, cut them out, stuck them on here. They look like they were applied uh, in a factory. And you could do that with eyes too, pretty easily actually. And I'm gonna, here's what it looks like. I printed out a sheet of hundreds of eyes of different sizes and styles that I took uh, from different places online. Some of these I constructed myself. Some of these were sent to me by a friend just to make my life easier. And then I have imperial insignias and other things that I cut out here too that I can just go to whenever I need to apply something. It's super easy and it is, oh my God, just so much easier and more predictable than trying to do it by hand. Okay, let's take a quick survey here of the workbench. What am I missing? What have I forgotten to talk about? One other note on the water slide thing. I'm not, that was, that should not pass as a tutorial on water slides. Again, just like when I talked about 3D printing, there are way better tutorials online uh, that you can go watch by far more qualified people than me that will teach you how to use water slide decals much better. But it is really the way to go. Um, I think that's pretty much it, you guys. If you have any questions about anything that I said here, any comments, any complaints, any recommendations, you want to tell me my my uh, methods are stupid and my figures look like crap, you can do that too. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, keep watching. If you like uh, this video and others, uh, hit the subscribe button and I'll do more. Thanks, guys. Stay funky.